Mitongi Lerimlu, Jemba Lexoda, Kusu Sampo Sejuni, Debelda Naragi Mindi, Tashil, Lamten Sangetin Zen Sejuni, Debelda Datugi Mitona, De Osam Vegan Semi Dilu, Namisemi Ziba Deleda, Jemba Lexo Sejuni, Dia Mrs. Jan Semi Digi, Lerimchi, Gotudi, Yebi, Nalipa, Di Zinimela. Did you get all that? I'm Elizabeth Alfano. This is another live episode of Awesome Vegans right here on Jane Unchained. This is my fabulous Bhutanese tour guide, Sanjay Tenzin. I hope I said yes. that right. Yes. Sanjay has been taking me, I also call him ST. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so ST has been taking me all over Bhutan, and we just got back from hiking four days in the lower Himalayas, about 45 kilometers. Yes, that's true. Yes, so very, very long hike, and nothing makes me hungry like hiking in the Himalayas. So I wanted to take you through some of the great vegan options that I've found here in Bhutan, and then while we're eating, ST is going to tell us a little bit about just how great Bhutan is. And there's some wonderful facts about Bhutan that I know all of you vegans are going to love. Uh, hello to LA. I think it's 6.30 in the morning by you. Shout out to Chicago. It must be 8.30 in the morning by you. New York, it's 9.30. And here it's 8.30 p.m. in Bhutan. So let's see if my cameraman can get a picture of all of our great food that we've got lined up. So I can show you... We've got some spinach and onion soup, which is so yummy. We're gonna have some. We've got cucumber salad, rice and veggies, oh so good. In Bhutan, they have this great red rice. We don't have it tonight, but super good. Uh, mushrooms and then some fried string beans. So I'm gonna start dishing everything out to ST. And uh, maybe he can tell us a little bit more about just how great Bhutan is. So can I serve you some food? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure. So. Uh, I have one thing about Bhutan that I love more than anything else, and that is slaughterhouses are illegal in Bhutan. That's right. There's not one slaughterhouse in Bhutan. It's illegal. Can you tell us why slaughterhouses are illegal? So the government has decided and not to have a slaughterhouse since it's been a, one of the, the Buddhist country in the world, and it's against the Buddhism. To talk about it right we don't have a slaughterhouse because right we feel that right it's a sinful to kill an any animal and we treat all the sentient beings as a motherly being so that's the main reason we don't have a slaughterhouse okay so right there everybody should come visit bhutan they do not have slaughterhouses because they feel that it is a, a sin yes. to kill animals I love it here. I love it here. Okay, so there's some other great facts about Bhutan. It is the only country in the world, I think, that is carbon neutral. Yes, that's true. It has been actually been in the social media for several times, like in 2016. So the first, second elected prime minister of Bhutan has been actually given an interview into a TED talk, which was held in... I'm not sure about the place right now, which was held in one of the Western country and he had declared, and there were a lot of scientific reasons to prove that the Bhutan isn't carbon neutral. The, being, the reason being is that right, Bhutan is covered with the 72% of forest as of now, and the fact about the constitution of our Bhutan states that it should remain the 60% throughout the generations to come. So that's the very reason we are carbon neutral. So. Okay, so how awesome is that? By constitutional law, the country has to remain at least 60% of, of trees, yeah. right? So they have to have 60% of the country as forest. Yeah. And right now there's about 72% of the country that's forest, yes. which makes them the only country in the world that's carbon neutral, yes. which makes it pretty awesome. Uh, I think there's another cool fact about Bhutan. Mm -hmm. You have something called the Gross National Happiness. Yes. What is this? So Gross National Happiness was initiated by the four great kings, like the fourth king of the country. His name is King Jigme Singe Wangchu, who is the founding father of the Gross National Happiness. So Gross National Happiness is just a concept of uh, happiness 
where every you know we need to actually balance the materialism as an as well as the spiritualism so that's the very reason so he had initiated the the Grosh national happiness and he's the founder of it and the Grosh national happiness consists of the four pillars first thing is the good governance and the second thing is social sustainable social economical development and third thing is the preservation of the environment environment and the I think that's the preservation of the culture and the tradition. tradition. And the fourth thing is the conservation of the environment. So these are the main four pillars to carry any development activities in within the country. So you will have to look at into these four pillars. But the number one fact is that there should be a good government to take care of the rest of the three other pillars. So that's the gross national happiness. Okay, you got that y'all? There's supposed to be good governance. Hmm, I don't know about us. Okay, so they have good governments, and then everyone needs a chance for sustainable economic growth, and then it's important to preserve their culture, and get this, they respect their environment so much, not just their animals, but also their environment, that it's part of one of the four pillars of gross national happiness, is to protect yeah. the environment. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so that deserves that deserves some food here. Uh, so I'm gonna dig into what we've got. Mm -hmm. Every time I eat here, it's always a little new. So I'm gonna try this cucumber salad. Mm -hmm. I've been here for about a week, but this is gonna be the first time that I'm digging into cucumber salad. And there's other things in here, tomatoes, onions. So a cool thing about Bhutan. Mmm, oh my gosh, ginger. Is ginger in here? Yes, there is ginger and there is you know, cucumber and tomato. Oh my and gosh. They have coriander. Coriander. And on top of that, there's saffron pepper. So. And saffron peppers. Okay, so here are some of the cool things that Bhutan does with food. First of all, so far I've had a bunch of radish dishes. Now you might think, well, what are you going to do with a radish? But they fry up radishes. So it's, and it's super tasty. And then, of course, what goes with radish? But. Chili. Okay. <laughs> Every dish has chilies. I mean the hot serrano pepper kind of chili. I don't know the exact name. What's the exact name of the the red chilies that you use? So it's hard to explain because I'm not actually really expertise in chilies and all, but right, they do have little uh, bigger sort of chili because that would be the what you had mentioned it earlier. So serrano yes. pepper kind of chili. Yeah. It's so super hot. So they have a red chili, a long one, serrano pepper-ish, and then a green chili, mm -hmm. which is equally as hot. Yes. And they put them in everything. In fact, there's one dish that is just chilies. It's just sauteed chilies. Sometimes they add cheese. Okay, vegans, hold up. We're gonna talk about cheese. Sometimes they don't add cheese. It's just chilies. Yeah. Sauteed, and then they eat it straight. Not even with rice. It's impressive. <laughs> okay, so, but every time I go to a meal in Bhutan, I get something different. So here for the first time, I'm having these fried green beans. Are these fried green beans or these yeah, fried chilies? These fried green beans. Fried green beans, okay. I'm going for it. Mm. Oh, super yummy. Mm. There's something else in there too. Yeah, there is tomato mm. as well as the... Um, tomato. The the onions in and it. chili. Yeah, there's chili, chili in chili. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even chili for breakfast. Sometimes they eat. They eat just chili and and cheese. Okay, so let's get to the cheese thing. I'm vegan, so I've had to request a lot of dishes without cheese and without butter, but which I've done and they've graciously done that for me. Oh, that chili's hot. <laughs> um, but. A lot of them do eat cheese and butter. It's with every meal. So chilies and cheese, potatoes and cheese, um, mushrooms and cheese, yeah. cheese. Cabbage with cheese. Cabbage with cheese. cheese. Spinach with cheese. Yes. Also. Now, of course, as a vegan, we all go, oh, no. Okay, I get that. I'm with you. Let me just tell you how they get their milk and how they make butter. So there are no factory farms and there are no factory dairy facilities. So any birth happens naturally. So no artificial insemination, etc. 
there is no such thing as curtailed movement. So every cow and every yak is part of the landscape and they're part of small family organizations. They roam free. They have their children, their babies free. And then the mother and baby are separated for about 10 minutes, you yes, said. 10 minutes. And in that 10 minutes, you can get about four or five, five liters, of, the liters milk. of milk. And then the baby and mother are joined again and the baby has as much milk as it wants. Yes. Or Again, it's not for me, but I'm just telling you it's not a country of abuse. Is that yes, fair to say? Yes. Now, tricky, tricky subject as always. You said that they are trying out a breeding facility. Yes. So currently, it does not exist to have a facility where animals are bred for any reason. Mm -hmm. But you said this is something that they're considering. Yes, because it, in order to have actually uh, income for the the farmers. Because at Bhutan, the 60% of the, the population depends upon the farming right now. So in order to have the good yield out of, to produce any like vegetables, like even the milk produce, you know. So they are trying to actually have a breeding center in the western part of the country whereby they can have a good yield or produce from the, the breed, uh, breed uh, hybrid means the brown suis or oh, so to had yes because to have the uh, the much more produce whereby the farmers can actually have a good income yes. for the daily living so that's yes. the main point yes. where but right that having said so there won't be the much big in huge in numbers but it will be in small numbers to just begin with mm. so so uh, ST and I and my wonderful boyfriend Ken who's helping me out here with lights and camera we had a long conversation about this at lunch in that Bhutan considers itself a third world country is that fair to say third world a, a country. Developing, yes, country. developing country but I'll tell you it acts very much in my opinion like a first world country because a lot of things are very well thought out there's a very well established legal system there are a lot of rules that work here. I mean, it's a small country, 750,000. Mm -hmm. So they don't have any scaling issues that we might have in the United States because of this and because of their policies. For example, there are no poor. Um, everyone has food. Everyone has shelter. About 60% of the country yes. is farmers. Yes. But of course, with development, young people don't want to farm anymore like their parents did. They want to do fun things like new yeah. tour guide. So that's putting pressure on the farmers. They're considering new ideas that the Western world does, like breeding facilities. I say no, I say no. It'll, it's only on a trial system right now, yeah. so it will be interesting to see if your country decides to do it. I think, yeah, I'm expecting the best out of it, and it's always, right, uh, the government will decide, right, whether it's going to help out for the farmers. Uh, maybe, in my perception, I think it should not be allowed by the government to do it, because it, being a small population, whatever we do, uh, can actually sustain ourselves with, within. But uh, being having said so, because uh, there are a lot of uh, increasing number of the travelers actually traveling towards the country, we have to actually uh, catch up with the rest of the world to provide them with what they are actually having. So oh. it's trying to cop, you know, catch up with the rest of the world. So Okay, well what I would say to that is I'm vegan and you guys can catch up with me and do no dairy and no uh -huh. butter and that's one option because they're, as we know, the vegans, they're going to be more and more vegans and they're going to be more and more vegans traveling yeah. around the world, more and more vegans spending money in gorgeous places like Bhutan. So. Uh -huh. That's another option to consider right. that we are a huge market force and uh, I would say no to butter and cheese. That's, my, that's right. my vote, that's my vote. But ST here, my, my fab ST is a vegetarian. A vegetarian. Yeah. Yes, and you've been vegetarian for how long? For it's long, it's been six years now. Mm, yeah. Since now, and I feel good myself, right? Not being consuming any sort of meat product, especially. But I do actually because it, there's no other options rather than having the butter and cheese. But I might actually give it up right after this moment. So one more vegan. <laughs> Wait. A, so this would be a high five. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> 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 a 
Look at poor ST. He has been such a good sport for this whole interview. So I'm going to let him now eat dinner with me and my Ken in peace. I'll just hold up one more thing because I think I've tried it all. We've had the rice. Did you have some rice? Yes. I've been Okay, I'm going to dish on some rice before I go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. As you all know, when the veggies are fresh, mm, it's the best way to go. I'm having some mushrooms. So far, what's your favorite? So, so far, my favorite is the hoagie, okay, with the cucumber salad. So, and the fresh yes, ginger. Fresh ginger. So. And my last thing before we go, this is one of my favorite soups, folks: spinach and, and onions, and they they churn the spinach. Right? Yes, they churn so, the spinach. I don't know if you can see this, you know how big spinach is, but they've muddled it, I'll say, so that the spinach is really fine and it's just in its own juice with onions. Mmm, oh, no, super good. Super, super good. So I actually think this soup just might be my favorite, but I'm with you on the cucumber salad uh -huh. and I hope to come to you live again, maybe yeah. tomorrow. We don't know. We're in the mm -hmm. capital, Thimphu, now, so we got good internet. Maybe we'll come to you again tomorrow because I really want to show you those radishes and those chili peppers and a lot more dishes here. And then we can continue to talk about just how great Bhutan is. Hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until I see you next time, either tomorrow or maybe my next trip, which is Myanmar, right after Bhutan. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, and before you hit the don't go button, uh, I want to give a shout out to Bhutan Ma Mountain Good Holiday. Point. So Bhutan Mountain Holiday has been my tour guide organization. This is my fabulous tour guide, ST, Sanjay Tenzin. I'm Elizabeth Alfano. This is Awesome Vegans right here on Jane Unchained. Until I see you again, don't forget to be vegan.